uh, from your deep scientific research. Uh, but what do we really know about COVID-19? What are we learning? And I'm assuming that we're learning and globally collaborating every day. We are. And, and so people may look at this and say, well, this, this guy studies aging. What's he talking about COVID-19 for? Um, just a few bits of information that might answer that. Um, I study human aging, which is important here. Um, I've started a vaccine company, um, which Bill, Bill Gates invested in. It's a public company. So I've got that experience. I've got a DNA testing company that tests for COVID-19 genetic material. Um, and I, I, I'm a gatherer of information. I read a lot uh, and try to synthesize things. So there's all that. So I feel somewhat able to speak on this topic, though I'm not an MD, I'm a PhD. Uh, so what am I seeing? Well, let, let's talk about the biology. Uh, we're now learning that in the body, what happens is that the young people are very able to, um, to keep the, the numbers of the virus down, but old people are not. And there's a number of differences between young and old bodies. There are changes in the T cells um, in diversity. So young people have lots of different types of T cells. Old people don't. They have this underlying level of inflammation that we've talked about that old, old people don't benefit from. They have less NAD in defenses, and that actually also leads to problems. Uh, they have a dysregulated renin, renin angiotensin system, which uh, you may know is modulated by the ACE2 system and blood pressure drugs. That's dysregulated. There's changes to what our body adds to the surface of proteins in terms of sugar. So proteins in the body have sugar attached, including the ACE2 receptor on our cells and the spike protein on the virus. Um, there's also changes in biological age, which we can now measure. Um, we know exactly how old people are based on biology, not just birthday candles. Um, and they also, their cells also senesce so that part of the body becomes more zombie-like, and that's certainly not helpful either. But overall, what happens is that these viruses become so numerous, and then the, the dead viruses release their contents, is that the body overreacts in the elderly, you get inflammation of the, art of the veins in the body, the very small capillaries or capillaries. And this ends up, in many cases, blocking the blood flow in the body, not just in the lungs, but in the heart, in the kidneys, in the brain. Um, and trying to stop that's very, very difficult um, because it's just once the body starts getting clogged up, it can't get oxygen and you can't easily release those clots from the body without um, causing some damage. So one of the things I'm involved with is trying to raise the NAD levels in patients so that we can overcome a lot of those problems and uh, shut down that hyperinflammation. So you certainly explain the challenges in COVID-19 that people over 60 or compromised immune systems, heart issues, diabetes. And you mentioned earlier when talking about longevity, which we didn't do as deep of a dive as I would like, but limited on time, the real important marker of blood sugar. Uh, and what we take in as sugars, as carbohydrates, and a potential challenge that gives us in terms of raising that blood sugar and the impact that has potentially on inflammation uh, and obviously on the potential of pre-diabetes. Okay, you laid a bit of a foundation from a scientific perspective. What can we do to protect ourselves? Is it simply enhancing our immune system? If we're obese, which 40% of Americans are, they're likely gonna have heart issues, they're gonna have diabetes. Is it as simple as being in better shape? Well, yeah, it is. It is. If, if you are obese, there are two problems that have happened to you. One is that you've had a high level of blood sugar in your body because you're overeating. Um, and high blood sugar, as we've said, is, is really bad. There was a paper that just came out uh, in uh, the EMBO journal, if you want to look it up, EMBO, that showed actually that high blood sugar levels leads to increased DNA damage, which as I've explained, uh, is part of the aging process. that leads to the loss of information and cells lose their identity. So all of this is coming together in the information theory of aging, that by overeating, we're causing DNA damage and scratching up our DVDs. But also what's happening is when you become obese, your fat cells will start to naturally secrete inflammatory molecules and the overall inflammation in your body will go up and up and up. And we know that 
chronic inflammation also accelerates the aging process. Uh, and in terms of from, and I know you want to be careful, again, we're not giving medical advice. Uh, I'm not an MD, you're not an MD. But in terms of the scientific research relative to immunity, broadly speaking, uh, having, and this is where blood workups could certainly help, but you mentioned vitamin D. There's been some talk about certain forms of and high enough doses in some trials of vitamin C. What are you reading? Well, uh, so I've started taking vitamin C, uh, liposomal um, vitamin That's C. That's it, yes. <laughs> and yeah. if you don't mind, uh, what dosage? Uh, I'd have to run to my bathroom, but it's a, it's a hefty capsule. Uh, I'm guessing it, that it's 500 milligrams. Yeah, but some people take much more. You can go to a gram, some people even higher. But I, I don't go high because it's been shown time and time again that high levels of this and other antioxidants can actually cause more damage, um, including DNA damage, which of course we don't want. So yeah, I'm taking uh, a moderate level of vitamin C every morning. So you mentioned things like managing weight, uh, caloric restriction, broadly being in good health with your immunity through exercise, possibly cold water plunges if your heart could take it, and so on. Us. And you know, vitamin D, possibly vitamin C, uh, quartin, I believe, is another one that we're hearing of from an immunity perspective. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Resveratrol, which you spoke about, NAD, which you were, you know, that was one of the ones you were really, that's, that's kind of beyond the forefront of what's going on. You mentioned quercetin, quercetin uh, is yes. how it's pronounced, yep. Um, we've mentioned olive oil, which has oleic acid. We've mentioned resveratrol. There's another one called physetin, which uh, is anti-cell uh, senescence. All of these molecules actually bind to the SIRT1 enzyme, the Pac-Man. And I don't think that's a coincidence. I think this is telling us that turning on these sirtuins is the way to go in our diet.